Join us now for more on the different states' response to this crisis. Steve Bannon, former White House chief strategist, he's now host of the podcast, The War Room a Pandemic. Steve, it's, uh, tomorrow's May 1st. How is the conversation on May 31st going to be different than the conversation we're having right now, in your view? What's going to transpire over the next uh, 30 days, 31 days? Well, you're going to start to see these governors, I think, prudently but boldly start to unlock their uh, economies. Look, in a few minutes, you're going to announce, uh, you know, what, another three, three and a half, maybe up to four million, uh, you know, more job losses. At 30 million, this is in the last 100 days, and really in 60 days, we've had greater job losses in the Great Depression. So I think you're seeing these governors who I think if you look at the polling, they've got a lot of support from their states. So you're going to see states like Texas. You're going to see states like Ohio. Uh, Florida eventually start to open up and do it in a way that, you know, make sure that their states are safe, that the people, that the public health systems are working, but also that people can get back to work. And I think that's what people want to do. They want to do it in a in a smart, prudent, but, uh, you know, as fast as possible, as fast as prudently possible. How is the interplay going to work between the Trump administration and the different governors, the, the governors of different parties, of different states, with different populations, and, and, and everything else. How do you see that playing out in, in this charged environment that we're in right now? Well, you say charged. I think if you look at, look, this has been unprecedented, obviously, in, in world history, what's going on, in, in obviously, American history. But I think generally this kind of new federalism that President Trump has had in allowing the governors to kind of be the management, right? They set the overall policy at the federal government level and supply logistical support. But I think allowing the governors to, to do this, whether it's Governor Murphy in New Jersey or Governor Cuomo in New York, or particularly people like Governor DeWine, it's worked out. It's generally worked out pretty well. And I think people in those states, particularly if you look at the polling, are generally happy and confident about it. And I think President Trump, what they're still doing is putting the overall guidance, right, and trying to do support where they can do support, and the governors are going to take the lead here. And I think we'll start to see this. I think by May 31st, I think we're going to be in much better shape, particularly in, in, in kind of feeling this through of how you unlock this economy. And I believe the president is doing the smart thing by backing these governors and letting the governors take the lead on this. So across the board, you think that the balance between reopening the economy, which obviously that you know, we you know, the expression, the cure being worse than the disease itself, that you hear that a lot. I mean, do you think the right balance has been struck at this point because we were basically still closed down? It's been very painful, uh, but we have bent, uh, bent the curve and we're, we're seeing some progress in, in, in trying to minimize uh, the number of deaths. Look, I, as you know, in our show, we started out in January because we realized what a historic event this was going to be, given what the Chinese Communist Party did in locking down Hubei province. Remember, Hubei province is about the size of France with the same, uh, generally close to the same population. And quarantining Wuhan, which is 40 percent bigger than New York, we knew this was going to be massive. We had actually advocated if you're going to take, you know, you should have a harder shutdown. But I think what the president did it and backing these governors and having kind of this new federalism turned out to be smart. People closer to the deck plates could actually manage this. And so I think that if you go back and look at it, given everything that could have transpired, right, and obviously at six, over 60,000 uh, deaths so far, this has been the largest mass casualty event in American history for civilians. So it's been obviously terrible in that regards, but at least manageable, given what the alternatives were if you just had done nothing and tried to go just to herd immunity. So I think it was very prudently done. It was smartly done. Obviously, a lot of this was made up as it went along. And I think backing the play of governors to do this uh, is, is going to be smart. Look, President Trump took bold actions at the federal level when he had to. Uh, stopping the travel to China, stopping the travel in from Europe, declaring a national emergency that allowed FEMA to get more involved and have more resources. But so far, I think it's come off. I think it's come off quite well, given the horrific nature of what we had. Remember, if the Chinese Communist Party had told us back in December when they knew about human to human transmission, they knew about community spread. If they told the world, Southampton University in England says 95 percent of this will all been avoided, all the deaths, all the agony, and all the economic carnage. Given the fact that that was hidden from us and people lied about it, I think generally everybody, regardless of political ideology, whether it's Gavin Newsom in California or Governor Cuomo in New York, Governor DeWine in Ohio, Abbott in Texas, DeSantis, I think people pulled together, and we've actually come through at this point, and now it's, let's get on with it. Remember, 
regardless of political ideology, the 30 million Americans uh, unemployed as of you know later this morning when the numbers come out, that is both Republicans and Democrats, but they're American citizens. What they want to do is get back to work. And the governors, I think, at the tip of the spear with the president having their back at the federal level. Andrew. Steve, this is a, this is a business slash political question. Um, given the, the huge steps the Fed has taken, the Treasury has taken, and I think a lot of people think they, those steps needed to be taken, but at some level you could argue that this is the largest corporate welfare program that's ever been undertaken in the world. It's the largest corporate insurance program in the world. Um, I just wonder how you think some people who, who believe in free market capitalism are going to think about that and how it shifts, if it does, the view inside the Republican Party about things like the Affordable Care Act, given that you now have, uh, we've now proven that we care or we, we say we care about employees and we care about their health. Look, you go back, Andrew, you know, this is, like I said, unprecedented. And if you look at the action that was taken at the Federal Reserve, it's one of the reasons you're talking about this buoyant uh, stock market is that the Fed at an unprecedented level has come in and kind of backed uh, every asset class that we have, except for probably equities. But they've got they've had unprecedented was the three, four, five trillion dollar bazooka to back that up. So we've had a change, kind of, quite frankly, in the nature, because remember, we're at war. President Trump is a wartime president. This is a war on two fronts. On one front, it's about the pandemic and this unprecedented uh, virus that came that came upon us. The other, and let's be brutally frank about it, is this war against the Chinese Communist Party, both an information war and an economic war. And as you remember, it's your deal book conference back in the fall of last year. I took on Tom Friedman, Eric Schmidt, and others and said, hey, we have to face a brutal reality. We're facing a competitor here that is not a partner, not a strategic, uh, you know, workmate. This is an enemy, and they treat us like an enemy. We've got to face that. And if you look at what happened here, they treated us like an enemy. That's why I think the scale of this has been so unprecedented. And look at what we've done at the Federal Reserve level. So, yes, I think the very nature of how we have to get our hands around this has changed a degree. Remember, we're still free market capitalism, but we have to deal with this amazing scale that we've, you know, we've had in the last 90 days. Hey, Steve, the, uh, the president still seems at least partly to be pulling his punches on, on you know, talking about, uh, you know, kind of doing something to China, somehow getting reimbursed for their role in all of this or, or some type of punitive uh, action because it, people attribute that to still wanting the trade deal to succeed. Do you eventually think that there's going to be something that, that we're going to ask for China to reimburse the, the world or the United States for at this point? And, and do you think that the trade talks are, uh, are making it li less likely that he's too vociferous about that right at this point? Just go back to what Andrew said a minute ago. Look, we've got 30 million people unemployed. You have, what, hundreds of thousands of people around the world dead. You have economic carnage everywhere. And remember, it's not just the cash we put in. It's the opportunity cost of what we've had to forego. No, the Chinese Communist Party, is direct, they're knowingly responsible for this, as the president said. Let's leave aside the fact of what they've been doing in these labs. Let's leave aside the fact of do they have a biological weapons program or not. Investigations at the intelligence level with all these nations combined at the, at the health level, at the public health services, that'll be full investigations of that. We know for a fact they knew they had human transmission and community spread in, in mid to late December. They knew this and they lied. They came to they came to the White House and signed a signed a trade deal, the trade deal you're talking about. And President Trump reiterated last night they never said a word about this. They had the World Health Organization come out on the 14th of January, put out a tweet saying we after consultation with senior members of the Chinese uh, government. The Chinese Communist Party, they've told us there's no human to human transmission. These are bald faced lies. At the same time, they're going around the world vacuuming up in Europe, Brazil, Australia, and the United States all the personal protective equipment, which is the key part for actually doing testing and also protecting the doctor and nurses teams that were so essential to save lives in places like Italy and in Brooklyn and Queens. No, they're directly responsible. This is going to have to, the people of the world are going to demand an accounting. They're going to demand a responsibility. And the Chinese Communist Party is going to have to pay. Look, 
President Trump forced them into a trade deal they definitely didn't want to do, right? But I think that's been overcome by events to a degree about they have to answer for this first. All the things about IP protection, forced technology transfers, all of that are very important, but they have to answer this first. And I got to tell you, I think the world's going to hold them in judgment, and that judgment is not going to be very pretty. They owe trillions, if not tens of trillions of dollars. Every casket you see in Hart Island in that mass grave has a lawyer associated with it, and it should, okay? Every cough they're talking about now, you talk about opening up, we're trying to work through what even the liabilities are for businesses, right? It's one of the reasons President Trump had the meeting. Mitch McConnell's talking about, does the government get involved even in that? Every one of those coughs are going to have a lawyer, too. So the Chinese Communist Party knew about this. They, they turned a blind eye to it. And particularly when they had it in their own country, they tried to protect it going around the rest of China, but they didn't care about it going around the rest of the world. Right. This goes back to what I said at Andrew Ross Sorkin's conference in, in November. Okay, they're the enemy of the Chinese people, they're the enemy of the citizens of the United States, and they're the enemy of mankind. And they have to be held accountable and they have to be held responsible for this.